of my friends say, girl, you The storied history of Ed and Marge Danilchuk is a tale of love, laughter, and incredible success. They met at a very young age. As a teenager, Ed would deliver fuel for his father's oil company to Marge's family farm in Rosser, Manitoba, and they had instant chemistry. Ed invited Marge to a dance a short time after, and that began their four-year courtship. I got love, love. They married in 1957. Ed was 21 and Marge 20. A year before they were married, Ed's mother and father sold their business, John D. Oil, on Pembina Highway and moved to California. The new owners hired Ed to run the business. It was a 24-hour business, so Ed worked long hours while Marge took care of their ever-growing family. Bruce was born in 1958, followed by Sandy in 1959, Doug in 1960, and Sharon in 1963. Life was busy with, say, four kids and dogs, and um, at night, um, I can remember often going back to work with my dad, because he worked at nights, every night, actually, um, and I would help the accountant or the bookkeeper do some of the um, accounting. You know, he'd give us little jobs like, fill up the drink machine, here's a stack of drinks, you know, and it would be one of those old time drink machines that you'd have to load so um, or you know he'd have us pulling weeds I mean it was always something. It was a busy household dad was always always working morning noon and night um, my mom sold real estate so that kept her busy on Sundays was our big um, day out to come to the corner like to crossroads and skidoo all day I, I vividly remember that. Their business ventures grew rapidly thanks to their shrewd practices and tolerance for risk. They purchased two gas stations, but then moved into the bulk fuel business, and then soon after into the trucking business, and then into the car dealership business, including Lone Star Mercedes-Benz. Around that time, Marge embarked on her own successful career in residential real estate. In 1981, they established Peterbilt Manitoba as Manitoba's first full-service Peterbilt dealership. In 1987, they acquired Peterbilt Calgary and grew the business to include locations in Red Deer, Lethbridge, and Medicine Hat. In 1995, they established Lone Star Harley-Davidson. Together, Ed and Marge created a successful business empire, Ed focusing on the automotive aspects and Marge on the real estate side. The fuel business led to the trucking business and then at the time they were building the floodway uh, here around Winnipeg the truck drivers were coming in, the guys were hauling the gravel and the dirt to the site there on, on the floodway. And uh, my dad was intrigued by the trucks and a lot, and he always was talking to the truckers and that, so he ventured off and bought a truck to go haul on the floodway. When my dad had the gas station, he had the first diesel pump in Winnipeg to pump diesel fuel into trucks. You know, dad always had the gas station, so there was always a job pumping gas. And as kids, Doug and I would always be there on the weekends or evenings after school. He loved the people, he loved the, the challenge, I guess. And he always knew uh, in the back of his mind if he worked hard, it would work out. And it always did for him. You know, he had some tough times. And, you know, in the 80s when he started Peterbilt, it was 24% interest. So it was, truck sales were hard. But when it all turned, then deregulation happened. And then when deregulation happened, then Peterbilt sales took off. And my dad was lucky, he uh, had a lot of good people work for him and they worked hard. Same with the car dealership, the Mercedes-Benz dealership, you know, it was slow going, but it did turn around and it, it did do well. He told me once that, uh, that he was kind of a bad kid in school and, you know, kept getting in trouble and, and that sort of thing. You know, that after the, his parents moved to California, he decided to uh, just really give all his energy into working and probably in some way show his parents, even though they no longer lived here, that he was not just a bad kid, but that he could achieve things. He was certainly proud of his achievements um, and shared many stories uh, <laughs> of some of the events that happened over time. Ed had uh, achieved uh, huge successes in uh, commercially, business-wise. He used to talk about the fact that he didn't have a formal education. But, uh, he certainly excelled and exceeded uh, 
most of the rest of us who, who had more of a formal <laughs> education. Ed Danilchuk is one of the most uh, fascinating people I ever met. He was a larger than life presence, um, this incredibly generous, humorous, uh, straightforward person who um, was an incredible success in his life. He built quite, a, quite an empire uh, as a successful businessman and uh, I admire him incredibly. He worked very hard. I mean, he was at, at his office early in the morning and he worked morning, noon, and night. I'm also most impressed with the relationship that he and Mark had. They're a very happy couple, in my opinion. I think they became entrepreneurs because they had the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, to me, entrepreneurial spirit is code for workaholic. Ed loved to work. Uh, it's what he lived for and uh, made him happy. And, and Marge was no slouch either. I mean, she's always been involved. She was in real estate early on. She ran Harley Davidson. Uh, she's always been involved in Peterbilt. He taught me a lot about your work ethic and I think he always told himself and other people, you can always do better. You know, and I don't think he ever took no as an answer. He always said, um, when someone says no, it's an opportunity to ask again. So he just had you know, this drive and motive that a lot of people don't have. I don't think it was luck at all. I think it was extreme hard work, lots of hours, and, and building the right relationships. He was very likable, he loved people. It didn't matter who the person is, he met everyone, and I think through that fell into some good relationships with people that leveraged his business. I always felt that if I worked with him and did things with him and tried things his way and all that, that you know, he was never going to set me up to fail, and I always felt that way, and, and I was pretty proud of that. Like he, he really, he took me on like another son, and you know, he was very good to me that way. And it was, uh, you always wanted to do well for him, because you wanted to show him he could do it. And uh, that was a big deal for me. Lots of pride, and and uh, always proud to do well for him. As people get older, and you know, he was in his 80s. There, it was, I mean, if it's just him and I, I called him dad. <laughs> always, I spent a lot of extra time with him and helped him. Did a lot of things for him, and, and you know, I'm proud of that fact. It's, he gave me a good start. I don't think he would have been a good employee for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He was the boss type, so I think he wanted to work for himself. Yeah, and had That's a the impression vision. I had, anyways. Yeah. I think it was hard work, and like Sandy said, I think uh, her father in particular was a risk taker. Um, he never shied away from a challenge. He just liked to be in business on his own and make money. I think that's why he was so successful. So I'm standing here in front of uh, uh, part of uh, Ed's car collection and a lot of folks, you know, knew that Ed was passionate about cars, motorcycles, trucks. You know, they were all his favorite things, but uh, not everybody knew that he had quite an extensive car collection. Uh, many of them have actually been sold off since Ed passed, um, but we are here at what he affectionately called his car barn. Now this plum crazy Plymouth Cuda was uh, probably one of the cars that excited Ed the most that he was able to buy this car. Um, it is the most valuable car in his collection. and. Um, it's certainly a beautiful car. This car has been completely restored to original. And one of the interesting things about the way the restoration was done on this car is that they literally used only original parts. Nothing was manufactured or aftermarket. Uh, if they needed a part for a certain thing, they would find it off an original car so that uh, the car would not be made up of any aftermarket parts. This 1970 Chevelle was another of Ed's favorites. Um, he bought it uh, from the Barrett Jackson auction and it was part of the Reggie Jackson collection. Okay, you'll see here um, that Ed had a real thing for early 30s and, and right into the 40s Fords. He absolutely loved them and I think, uh, you know, one of the interesting things about Ed's collection, I, I asked him many times, you know, why did you buy this or why did you focus on that? and he tend to focus on cars that his friends liked. So it wasn't about buying a car 
you know, to show his friends, well, I can buy this car that you love. It was about buying a car so he could have his friends come here and drive it around and enjoy it. And uh, he often offered his friends to be able to take a car down to the car show and, uh, you know, really let people enjoy it. And uh, one friend of Ed's in particular really loved 30s Fords and often accompanied Ed to the auctions. Uh, so his um, selection uh, often included the mid-30s and early 30s Fords. So here we are in another part of Ed's collection and uh, it's the 50s. It's the 50s. It's the time of diners and jukeboxes and great 50s cars. And uh, Ed didn't really pick favorites between uh, Ford, Chevy and Dodge, but uh, he saw the investment value uh, was better with the Fords and Chevys. So, um, you know, as long as I've known Ed, there's been a whole series of 50s uh, convertibles that have come through here, like this 1958 Chevy Impala. Um, this actually is the hardtop that we've sold the convertible. Uh, they were identical in color and identical in interior. Um, unfortunately, the convertible's gone, but we still have the hardtop. 1953 Cadillac convertible, 1953 Buick convertible, 1953 Oldsmobile convertible. So now you've seen some of uh, Ed's passion. Uh, he sure had a passion for these old cars. Um, he loved them and he loved enjoying them with his friends. And, uh, and that passion, that same passion he had for these cars drove his success over the course of his life. And uh, he was a very passionate guy. And if he had something in mind to do, he would do it. He was the type of man who wasn't worried about getting to the top of the mountain. It was about each step. And you simply take the next step and eventually you'll be at the top of the mountain. So that's what I learned from Ed, and uh, maybe that's what you could take home from this. My dad's legacy that he wanted to, to leave behind was what he did for the Grace Hospital. That was something he always talked about and wanted to do it. To see that happen was you know, pretty incredible, and I know he was very proud of that and what he was able to do for the Grace Hospital and you know, what, and what the Grace Hospital did for my dad. Well, the Grace Hospital has always been close in our family because we live by the, the hospital. Healthcare is major. And uh, my dad had a lot of health issues in his life. So he knows what it was like to be sick. And he, I think he wanted to help as many people as he could. I know the Grace Hospital has always been close to their heart and they wanted to leave a legacy. And it was just only natural that the Grace Hospital would have been the place to um, have, you know, the name on the building and to, to give back. Um, so I definitely think that was hand in hand. And, and we grew up in St. James. Um, we grew up behind the Grace Hospital. And um, yeah, so that was kind of a natural fit. So, and I think that, you know, both of them were so proud uh, that the proud day when that sign went up, it, it was a very memorable moment for them. Healthcare and the well-being of others is extremely important to them. Um, they love their community, especially their St. James community, where they raise their children and have lived their whole life. And it's extremely important for them to see everyone have the equal health care and um, the same wait times. And so they want to contribute to that to make sure that, and especially to give back to our city. I think Winnipeg's been so good to them and they want to be able to help Winnipeggers. The uh, pinnacle of his recognition came when he did something that was uh, publi uh, publicly uh, acknowledged of their uh, working and making the contribution to the Grace Hospital for the emergency section. I think that's just simply marvelous and I know Ed was very proud to see his and Marge's name on the side of the building. They do it because they care. Um, They've both said to me many times, this is our hospital uh, and we care about it. And it was, yeah, it's not about the flash. It's not about the glitz. These are people, the whole family, who, you know, feel a sense of responsibility for their community and they have the means to make an impact and they've done it. 
Uh, and believe me, we're not at the door begging and pleading. Like often they're the ones coming to us to say, what can we do to help? So it has been this relationship that this hospital has had with the Danilchuk family that's like nothing that I've ever seen before in my history in fundraising. And it can't be underscored what it, what it has done for here and what it means for healthcare uh, in the west end of the city and the entire city. Pearl is our our heart and soul. She's the person who has been, you know, a booster in the community for this facility. That's why it's called Pearl McGonagall Road out front. Ed and Marge are our biggest monetary benefactors, and that's why the emergency department is named the Edward and Marjorie Danilchuk Center. Um, they are the complete embodiment of everything the Pearl McGonagall Award stands for, to, to say the very least. Um, there is nobody that is more deserving that award than Ed and Marge. I think he would be just humbly honored. He wouldn't be running around with a look what I won sort of thing, but deep down he'd be very appreciative. I think it means a lot for them to get this award. Uh, it's an acknowledgement of all the efforts that they put to giving back to the community. I think it's very gratifying for Marge. Uh, she's right now sitting in her COVID bubble. I think she can pat herself on the back for all the things that she and Ed have done for the community. Uh, you know, there's probably folks that didn't even know he only had one leg, but uh, you know, he suffered a lot of pain and it was difficult for him to move around. And a big part of helping the Grace Hospital for him was he wanted to make it as accessible as possible to, to everyone. He gave a lot of thought to accessibility just because that was something that kind of stymied him. And uh, you know, when there was a need for an MRI machine, he wanted to make that accessible so that people could you know, come to the grace and there would be an MRI machine. It's only fitting to give back to the organizations and the people that were there for him when he was at his lowest. You know, there's that saying that you should leave the world with a footprint on it, and I feel like my grandpa's done an amazing job. He really uh, changed my life and, and pointed me in the direction I went. I appreciate everything he's done for me. I just, I'm gonna miss him a lot, and uh, God bless you, my friend, because you were a real good friend of mine. And as a father, you know, he trusted me when I bought the business off him and uh, he knew I'd excel at it. And he was hard on me, he was tough on me. I respected my father for that and he made me the person I am today. I'd just like to say to my parents and my mother that we are proud of them and it's nice that they've done what they've done and we had a great uh, family life growing up and you know, for them to give back like they have, I, they should be proud of themselves. I don't even think that my grandpa realized how special he was. I don't know. I think he liked nice cars and you know, that's something yeah. he was passionate about and loved to talk about, but he had no clue the, what he brought to this world and how he might've been perceived. And the thing that is special about the Danilchuk family is that they take that responsibility seriously. And that's evidenced here at the Grace every day that um, they have given back to this community and they care, and they have used what they have to make this city a better place. And we're very lucky to be one of those beneficiaries at the grade. We want to say thank you, Ed and Margie Danilchuk. And when you go outside tonight, look up the sky, and that brightest star that's shining there is the newest star, and it said Danilchuk. Mm -hmm.